Cool. So Maria Rosa will be telling us about quantum detectors freely falling into black holes. Thank you, Everett. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Rosa Preciado Rivas. I'm a PhD student at the University of Waterloo and the Institute for, for Quantum Computing. I am presenting a project titled Quantum Detectors Freely Falling into Black Holes, which is a work in co collaboration with Manarnaim, Robert Mann, and uh, Jorma uh, Loco. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge that I stutter, which means that it might take me longer to, to say certain words, and that is why I thank you uh, for your uh, patience. Okay, so let's consider a quantum a scalar field in a curved space-time. In curved space-time, and even for non-inertial observers in a flat space-time, there is no dis distinguished notion of particles. That is why, in order to probe uh, the physics of the field, we let a quantum detector interact with it. In this scenario, the tra transitions uh, going on in the de detector will correspond to absorption and uh, emission of the field quanta, that is, of particles. Uh, this is how uh, quantum detectors uh, provide us an, an operational approach to, to describe particles in curved space-time. In other words, we are saying that particles are what particle detectors de detect. Uh, the simplest model for a particle detector is the unruh uh, model, which is a two-energy-level um, system that uh, undergoes transitions between its ground and uh, excited state. And the quantities that we are in interested in calculating are the probability of the transitions between these uh, uh, states and the, the derivative with respect to the total detection time of this pro probability, which is known as the tra transition rate. So there are a, a few things that we have learned using these quantum detectors. And one of those is that for uh, flat space-time, the quantum state that is uh, uh, associated with a vacuum that, that is with, with no particles uh, for an inertial observer corresponds to a thermal battle of particles for an, an, an uh, 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 accelerated observer. Moreover, uh, they will see that the temperature of, of these particles will be pro uh, proportional to their uh, uh, acceleration. In the case of, of black holes, uh, we have learned that for uh, non-inertial -in detectors, like those that are static or that are co-rotated -ro -ro with a black hole, they will uh, show this uh, thermal re response. And we expect that inertial detectors, like those that are uh, freely falling into a, a black hole, uh, they won't show this uh, thermal response. And furthermore, that this response will be some um, monotonic, maybe some uh, trivial function that will depend on their proper time. However, they recently discovered that uh, freely falling detectors into black hole can, can show some little excitement ac across the ho ho horizon. I am referring to this work by an adult in which they numerically calculated what is the, um, what is the transition prob probability for a detector that is falling into a four-dimensional sparse black hole. They found that the uh, transition prob probability as a function of this uh, radial, bit, uh, radial midpoint of the interaction in the interval has this uh, local maximum and, uh, and local minimum near the event or horizon. So my research question is uh, how general this phen phenomenon can be. 
can can we find this little excitement across the horizon in other space times? As I mentioned before, what we expected was was to see this um, monotonic function, and this uh, and that will also apply as the de detector crosses the ho horizon. For general uh, space times like the four-dimensional sparse field uh, black hole, this is a uh, very computationally intensive task. However, if we look at uh, lower dimensions, then this task uh, becomes tractable. This is why uh, we are looking at the BTC black hole, which is uh, um, um, a space-time in, in only three dimensions, has a constant curvature, and can be understood as just um, ADS3 space-time with identifications in its angular part. And we can also see that has a fairly simple uh, line element. There's some previous work by Hodgkinson and Luco in which they calculated what is the what is the transition rate for a detector that is uh, falling uh, towards a BTC black hole. However, they didn't calculate what is happening near near the event ho ho horizon, which in this figure should be uh, so somewhere here. So what we did was to follow their work. And what they did was to consider, of course, um, a detector that is a, a freely falling towards this uh, BTC black hole with a trajectory that is de described by, by these coordinates, which are going to depend on the curvature of the, of the space-time, the mass of, of the black hole, um, the initial position of the de detector given by this uh, parameter Q, and of course, what is the, the proper time of, of the de detector. They also consider that the detector has an um, energy gap E, and that is interacted uh, with a massless scalar field in a vacuum state. This is the expression that they found for the transition rate that will depend on the total detection time, the, the, the gap of the detector, and the Weinmann function of the field. One of the reasons uh, calculating this response in, in BTC space-time is that we can write the Weinmann function for, for the BTC black hole as an image sum of the um, ADS3 space-time taking in, into account what are the identifications. And this is the, the final expression for the transition rate, and we are going to see that it, it depends in a non-trivial way on the detector's gap, its proper time, its initial position, as well as the black hole's mass and the boundary conditions of the field. And this is what, what we calculated. There are a, a few remarks regarding this expression. The first one is that the n equals zero term well, uh, will be what is uh, will will be the rate for for a detector that is on pure ADS3 space time that is uh, not no black hole. And the second remark is that this argument for this square root here. Will will eventually be become negative within the integration interval for uh, for the terms with n e equal or larger than than one. As a result, we are going to see that our transition rate is going to have some points in which um, isn't going to be smooth, which are given by this expression here, and we have coined those points uh, glitches. And now we are ready to see some results. Here I am showing what is the tran transition rate as a function of the detector's uh, proper time. When it is zero, it is at its initial position. And when it is pi over two, then uh, the de detector is at r equals zero. First, I am showing what is the, the n equals zero term, which is the rate for just a pure ADS3 space time, and 
Actually, here there are three curves, each one uh, corresponding to, to the different boundary uh, conditions of the field. Now, with these uh, vertical dashed lines, I am showing where is the event horizon, and we are also showing what is uh, the, the previous work by Hodgkinson and Luco, and we can see that it's enclosed to, to the uh, ho ho horizon crossing. And now, uh, this, uh, these are our, our results for the BTC uh, black hole. We can see that there is something non-trivial or these oscillations going on uh, near, near, near the event horizon. And they are shown in, in, in more detail in this in, inset here. Uh, we can understand more about their behavior when we show where, uh, where the glitches are, uh, are happening here. Some of the observations that we made is that uh, this, this rate will, will differ more uh, from the uh, pure ADS3 rate whenever the first glitch uh, is reached. And the, and, and the, the difference will uh, become more pronounced uh, as more glitches are reached. Because uh, BTC is a fairly easy space time to work with, we were able to explore a wide range of masses and the de detector's initial position. I believe this is still working. And we can see that for the it's, it's smaller the black hole mass or the nearest the, uh, the de detector C initial position, then the more this tra tra transition rate uh, for the black hole it is going to dif uh, differ from the pure ADS3 rate. Yeah. Sorry about that. Finally, uh, we can see that uh, our results for the uh, BTC black hole show some similar be behavior near the event horizon that is similar to, to what was observed for the four-dimensional Svartuk case. Uh, finally, I would like to talk about uh, some future work that, that we would like to do. Uh, the first one is, is to look into other three-dimensional space times like the BTC Geon, which is a work that is actually already in, in preparation with Max Espadafora, and we also want to look at what happens at, at, at the detectors that are uh, freely falling into ro rotating uh, BTC black hole, which is a work that is in preparation with, uh, with CGA1. Also, uh, we also want to study or to look at what, what happens when we increase the number of detectors that we are looking at. In, in the first case, we want to look uh, at two detectors that start entangled and then one falls in, which is similar uh, to the work uh, made by Ken, Ericsson, and Rob. But in this case, uh, they consider just a, a one, one plus, plus, plus one um, metric. And we also want to look at when two detectors start on the grounded state and to look at um, how much entanglement can be harvested uh, from, uh, from the field. And we would like to study what is the entanglement amplification and, and shadow when, when these detectors are falling into the black hole. And to, so, uh, and to summarize, so uh, we knew that there was this little excitement uh, across the ho horizon for, for a four-dimensional Svarshi case. Then we look at, at the BTC black hole, and we numerically calculated what is the tra transition rate in, in this case. We found that for certain uh, parameters, we can also find uh, a similar effect. There is uh, some oscillations going on near, near the event horizon. 
However, you might have noticed that uh, we describe what is going on, but we never answer to why. And that is part of, of some uh, future work, is to understand why, uh, why this is happening. And finally, uh, we also want to look at what happens uh, with the BTC uh, geom black hole and uh, to our ro um, rotating BTC black hole, as well as what will be the uh, entanglement and correlation if we look uh, to detectors that are falling into black holes. That is everything that I wanted to say to you uh, today, and I thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you.